My name is Professor Topham Austin. I'm a consultant neonatologist. I look after sick and preterm infants on the neonatal intensive care unit. And while over the past 20 or 30 years there's been a dramatic increase in survival of sick newborn infants, a lot of them still go on to develop lifelong brain injury, placing an enormous burden on themselves, families, and on wider society. One of the real challenges is to be able to diagnose problems at an early stage in order to develop new therapeutic procedures. I've been heavily involved in developing new non-invasive imaging technologies, particularly in the field of biomedical optics. The beauty is that we can bring these instruments to the cot side and we can measure changes in blood flow and oxygenation non-invasively and try and detect problems before they are manifest clinically. There are lots of different causes of brain injury in the newborn infant, but a lot of them will go on to develop motor problems which we call cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy, however, is often only clinically diagnosed at about two years of age, by which time it can be very difficult to intervene to prevent further disability. The advantage of being able to detect problems within the motor system at what we call a preclinical stage using new optical techniques will enable us to trial out new therapies and hopefully minimize the extent of damage such that when the child gets to two, they'll have much better function in their motor system. We have established uh, an interdisciplinary group called NEOLAB, which is a unique collaboration between physicists, engineers, and clinicians, enabling us to study patients within the hospital environment, as well as develop new technologies which can be trialled at the cot side. I'll now hand over to Rob, who's the technical lead for this project. Hi, my name's Dr Rob Cooper. I'm an EPSRC Early Career Research Fellow in the Medical Physics and Biomedical Engineering Department at UCL. My research focuses on the use of near-infrared light to produce images of uh, human brain function. We've known for many years that you can use near-infrared light to monitor the oxygenation state of the brain, uh, and that's a method called near-infrared spectroscopy, or NEARS. The principal technique that I work with is called diffuse optical tomography, or DOT. Uh, and in DOT, you use many uh, sources and detectors of near-infrared light placed on the scalp to produce three-dimensional images of human brain function. Almost all DOT systems that have been built to date use uh, a large number of heavy optical fibers. Uh, and, and that means that they're bulky, but also you, you, there's only a certain number of sources and detectors that you can fit on the head, and that limits your image quality. By miniaturizing the electronics and moving to a wearable device, uh, not only do you uh, open up the technology to new experimental environments, but it allows you to make a step change in the quality of data you're able to obtain. Because this technology can be applied comfortably at the cot side, uh, we're going to be able to monitor the functional development of the infant motor system uh, over the preterm and term period. This means we'll be able to identify those infants that are developing abnormally much earlier than is currently possible. And that means we'll potentially be able to identify those infants at risk of cerebral palsy before the disability manifests itself. In the last year, our group at UCL has demonstrated the world's first fiberless, high-density diffuse optical tomography system. And we believe an extension of this technology will become the world's first truly wearable neuroimaging technology. This project is incredibly exciting because these wearable neuroimaging technologies not only provide a step change in the, in the quality of data we can obtain, but they allow the technology to be applied in a whole new range of circumstances. There really is a, a huge range of, of, of novel research that's there to be done. UCL has been at the forefront of the development of diffuse optical tomography for nearly 20 years, and in conjunction with the clinical collaborations and the industrial collaborations we have established here, uh, in the department, there really is no better place to pursue this research.